Yes, I am. Now we come to the most exciting part. So far, we've talked about a lot of theories about quantum mechanics. We talked about experiments that push the limits of our minds. We talked about mechanisms that work very differently from the macro universe. While we were talking about all of this, we all had one question on our minds. So, so, uncertainty, wave particle duality, quantum entanglement, teleportation. What does or will all this mean to us? What does it all mean in real life? Hesh. Here we are with the topic where we can find the answers to all these questions. Quantum computers. Quantum computers are today's equivalent of the adventure we have been on since Max Planck. There are so many details to talk about, but with this video, I want to draw a general framework. Let's talk about what awaits us. Let's put everything on a foundation. Then you will realize that many doors will open in front of us. We will close those doors one by one together. First of all, let's keep in mind that the current computer technology is nothing more than a calculator, a very advanced calculator. That's why we talked about limits in the transistor video. We have our limits and what we can do. They have brought civilization to this day, but they need to retire to take it further. That doesn't mean we are going to abandon computers. We'll continue to do what we're doing now, but there are huge problems ahead that they can't handle, and we need a huge innovation at this stage. Let's not forget that, because when we talk about quantum computers, everybody thinks of it as a more powerful, a new version, an update of existing computers. It is not. Quantum computers are a completely new phenomenon. They are not similar in any sense to existing computers. In other words, when comparing classical computers with quantum computers, we can think of them as being as similar as classical physics, and quantum physics are similar. That is to say, not at all. So what is a quantum computer? What is a quantum computer? Quite frankly, it is the most complex mechanism ever developed by mankind. The basis of this complexity is, of course, the fact that it is based on a lot of theories that we have been talking about so far, which are at the core of quantum physics, which makes no sense to us. But understanding how quantum computers work is a bit of a challenge for everyone. Let's take the challenge together. So let's play a game. Yes, let's play a game. The rules of the game are as follows. In one room, there is a switch. In the other room, there is a light bulb. You play the game with two people, you and a friend. First of all, you can move the switch up or down, but you don't know which one lights the bulb. Each player can move the switch once or not touch it at all. You enter the room first. You move the switch or don't touch it. Then your friend enters. He too can move the switch once or he can choose not to touch it. Then you enter the room with the light bulb. Now, if the light bulb is on, the first person to enter the room wins. If not, the second person wins. So this is exactly how the game works. After both people have entered and left the room, you look at the light bulb. If it's lit, the first person wins. If it's not, the second person wins. Of course, you decide to play a few more times. The position of the switch changes randomly at the end of each game. You play 10 times, 100 times. What are the chances of both people winning this game? Yes, 50% no matter how long you play. Let's play this game now against a classic computer. You are the first player, the computer is the second, and you repeat the game 100,000 times. Does the result change? No, it doesn't. Each time, the chances of winning here are 50%. But now let's replace this classical computer with a quantum computer. Shall I tell you the chances of a quantum computer winning this game? 100%.
your chances of winning this game? Zero. None. Repeat it billions of times if you want. Zero. What do you mean? Let me explain. The reason why I said a very advanced calculator when I was talking about classical computers is this. No matter how advanced classical computers are, they transmit and process information in binary, that is, one and zero. Everything you see while watching this video right now, all the colors, everything you hear can be written in binary. It can be expressed as one and zero. And this information can be in two states, one or zero, which we call binary digits, bits. But quantum computers use qubits instead of bits. And these qubits can be either zero or one or both at the same time. In both states, Sound familiar? Yes, it does. I'm talking about superposition, one of the fundamental properties of the quantum universe. The ability of a particle to be in more than one state at the same time. So if you were playing the game just now with a quantum computer, the switch would be in both the on and off state. And when you observe the light bulb, it will always implement the winning state and it will always win. Let's try to reinforce it with another example. One evening, you decide to host your friends and 10 of them come to visit. Now the problem is to plan the order in which these people will sit. We are talking about a factorial of 10. That is, how many different ways the individual elements can be arranged. So you can arrange these 10 people in exactly 3,628,800 different ways. Naturally, you cannot calculate this on your own, and you use a classical computer. And your computer calculates these 3,628,800 possibilities one by one. If you have a fast computer, it will do it in a not very long time. But if you had a quantum computer, the qubits go into a superposition state where they calculate all these possibilities at the same time because it can check all the possibilities at the same time and test them at the same time, it will give you an instant answer. Let's summarize with one last very short example. You are in a maze and you can exit through two doors. Naturally, you have to try each route one by one. But let's say you have clones, hundreds of clones. You could find them in seconds. So you could be everywhere at once you could be in superposition. This is how qubits work, in theory. But it doesn't end there, of course. If there were more than one of these qubits, for example, and they could communicate with each other in a way that would bend space-time, instantaneously, with zero resistance. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm talking about entanglement. Using this feature, you can increase your processing speed billions of times and even start dreaming about the quantum internet. We'll do that on a separate page, of course. But this is the basic working principle. How does it work? We don't know. We don't know. We have no idea yet. But it works. We don't know how it works, but it does. But it looks like quantum computers are going to help us with that too. I'll tell you about it in a moment. Now let's talk about some of the problems. Why quantum computers are very, very difficult to get into our pockets. Why do quantum computers look like this? They are huge, the size of a room, huge structures. Now, the particles we call qubits in quantum computers are made up of electrons of the atoms we know. For example, a qubit is the electron of a phosphorus atom. So we are talking about an incredibly sensitive particle. These are particles that we cannot control or measure under normal conditions that swim in a sea of uncertainties. But it is this uncertainty that is the working logic of quantum computers. Wave particle situation, superposition. If you remember, when we interfere with the particle, all the possibilities disappear and we get a single state. But that doesn't work for us. That's why they call it collapse. The collapse of the system. So to keep the electron relatively under control, 
You have to keep it away from all dust particles, all infrared rays, electromagnetic waves, because any tiny interference means the whole system collapses. It doesn't work for us. That's why these qubits are kept inside these vacuum tubes. More importantly, these vacuum tubes have to be very cold. Very, very cold. I mean very close to absolute zero, negative 273.15 degrees. Because heat means energy, and the higher the energy, the more unstable the atoms and electrons are, the more they move. In order for them to be stable, they need to be kept in a very, very cold environment. So we're in the primitive era of quantum computing. It's like when classical computers were huge. So, now let's come to the answer to the question. Why are we bothering? Why do we need such a complex, challenging, and precise machine? And where will we use it? At this stage, these computers are far from being general purpose. They can be used for very specific tasks. Let's take a cargo company like FedEx. It has 100,000 vehicles and needs to deliver to 1 million addresses. It can take days, months, or even years for a classical computer to calculate how these vehicles will make this delivery in the shortest time, with the ideal route and the lowest fuel consumption. But with an advanced quantum computer, this process can be done instantaneously, millions of times faster. Not only that, quantum computers have the potential to make the most ideal investments in a huge portfolio. The most efficient use and distribution of the world's natural resources and energy efficiency. But for the most striking, utopian, and unusual use case, let's listen to Richard Feynman, one of the pioneers of quantum computing. Nature is not classical, and if you want to simulate nature, you have to reduce it to quantum and model it that way. Believe me, this is an incredibly big challenge. It's the most difficult problem humanity has ever faced. And that's what we can start talking about today, some 40 years after Feynman said that. Thanks to quantum computers, a simulation of nature. But of course, we started slowly. First, we had to simulate molecules. In 2016, Google even announced that it had completed the simulation of the hydrogen molecule. Then IBM simulated lithium hydride and beryllium hydride. More recently, a company called IonQ simulated the water molecule. What does molecule simulation mean? It means understanding the quantum universe using quantum computers, a phenomenon that is not normally possible with classical computers. Let me put it this way. When you can simulate molecules, you open an incredible door in physics, chemistry, and medicine. A fully developed quantum computer can simulate your body at the atomic level, find the problems, and simulate the drugs needed to solve these problems. It can reduce years of drug testing to seconds. It can plan any material required for any job at the atomic level and contribute to its production. So this is actually an update for humanity in its simplest form. It's the answer to thousands of problems we face right now. At the last level, we can talk about simulating the universe. This is another level. But I can safely say this, we are taking the first step. There are many more topics to talk about. Quantum cryptography, for example, the quantum internet I just mentioned, or what are the revolutions in chemistry, physics, and similar fields, apart from the incredible possibilities I mentioned. We will talk about all these. There will be separate videos about these. But I would like to end by talking about another very important topic especially to warn young people and to talk about a possibility. Currently, developed countries, especially the US, China, and Japan, are investing billions of dollars in quantum computers. They are allocating shares from their national budgets, and they are in a great race to train quantum computer programmers and experts. This race is such a race 
that everyone involved will win, because quantum computers simply mean unlimited power. When we talk about quantum cryptography, you will understand that countries with quantum power will not even need to have the strongest army. We are in a very, very important period right now, and I hope that we as a country will realize this and we can join this race before time passes. I know that there are universities in Turkey that are currently working on this issue, but you can also take into account that there will be a great need for a workforce in this field all over the world when you are planning your personal future. The future is coming and we need to work very, very hard if we don't want to get lost in the past, in every sense. As I said at the beginning, as you can see, many doors have opened before us. In the future, we will touch upon all the topics I have mentioned and many other related topics together. We are in a very exciting process and we will share this excitement together. Before I finish, many, many thanks to everyone for their support. I look forward to your support in this journey. And as always, until we meet again, I'm glad you're here. Love.